you have this virus that's spreading and people are dying from it. People are getting sick from it. People are reacting to the reactions, to the reaction, to the re- It's just like this ripple effect. And I think that the uprisings last year in part, not, not I mean, obviously the, the, the spark was the murder of George Floyd, but you have to acknowledge the material conditions that led to it. And, <laughs> and then the reaction from the far right, it's just like this whole, it was, just, it was a, it was a clusterfuck to be honest <laughs> with you. So out of that, sorry, I'm like elaborating too much here. Out of all that, underneath all of this was this, this multi-layered, complex, convoluted conspiracy theory thing, cult thing that was happening mm. around QAnon, where a figure like Donald Trump became somehow a messianic figure out of all of that. It was really disturbing to see people that I felt were seemingly rational or had their mm. head on straight getting into some weird ass ideas. Mm. whether it was triggered by the pandemic and wearing masks and the vaccine rollout or the QAnon thing surrounding, you know, save the children and this. I mean, it was so many things happening. It was Mm. really disheartening to see people that I loved and cared about, or I at least was acquainted with, Mm. get sucked into this really peculiar way of Mm. thinking about reality. And I'm curious, you know, you've talked about this and I want to bring this up because Mm. this lack of relation or... Um, you know, this this not having an animus framework any longer has put us in a very peculiar place. Mm. So in a time like now where we have so many crises mm. emerging, people are trying to make sense of it. Mm. And wh- how does conspiracy theories fit into your understanding of animism and all the things yeah. we've been discussing up to this point? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think conspiracy theories is, is a point where uh, traditional knowledge perspective uh, of Euro traditional knowledge perspective, probably also other traditional knowledge perspectives, <laughs> can uh, can really give us a really good sort of outside critical perspectives on th- this particular aspect of modernity. Now, conspiracy theories were there before. I mean, the, the Romans had conspiracy theories that the Christians were eating children in secret cults, and uh, and uh, in, it, it was also the cause of the. Um, uh, expulsion of the Jews from England, uh, so so the phenomenon has been there, and and like uh, famously, the Jews have often been the target of conspiracy theories, which should perhaps tell you something about that conspiracies are often used to hurt people or yeah. uh, marginalized groups. However, something particularly, something particular has happened in our age with conspiracy theories. They, I, I think, they have become much, much bigger. And um, and I would say that there are two uh, defining factors that, that underlie this. One of the factors is basically the modern world that we've been talking about, the modern reality. That one where there's a there's a dead machine world out there that we need to exploit as efficiently as possible. And then there is this overflowing cultural insight that we have, or perhaps psychological insight that we have, and these two don't, don't touch each other. There's a Cartesian gap between them. Uh, mm-hmm. When this happens, we lose our capacity to read intentionality and subjectivity in the world. You could say we, we lose the, the capacity to disclose the intentionality and subjectivity in events around us, which is what animist peoples do. And they do it in so many ways. They do it with divination systems, for instance. You, you uh, uh, damn, you know, the caribou is not coming down, you know, like they used to do. How, how are we going to do this? Okay, we're going to take some bones and burn them, and then we're going to read what the spirits tell us. Uh, Or, man, I'm not succeeding in getting a girlfriend. I'm going to go to uh, uh, Santero and uh, ask him to uh, analyze uh, what's going on in in my life. You're a son of a goon. You need to uh, uh, give him an an offering and he will help you. These are ways of reading uh, subjectivity and intentionality into our life or out of our life or disclosing it in our life or revealing it in our life however mm-hmm. you want to to uh, formulate it now mm-hmm. but with the Cartesian uh, barrier between our subjectivity and the dead exterior world that capacity is severely compromised and that is why people invent 
sort of modern conspiracies are all, it's almost like myths that are, have run off the rails because mm-hmm. myths are supposed to do that exactly that for us tell us mm-hmm. okay you know you haven't given any, anything to Ugun for a year you have to give him something and he will help you um, give us these informations uh, when we lose that frame then we start inventing human actors it is the fault of the feminists that I'm not getting a girlfriend, yeah, <laughs> or it's yeah. it's the fault of of uh, or, 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 or even invent these completely cuckoo mythologies about the whole QAnon thing that that you just mm-hmm. mentioned, which was and and uh, this is also part of what has been so scary uh, in U.S. In, in the last year is not only people driving in pickup trucks with guns pointing in all directions into little towns and it just looks like some I don't know Star Wars scenario or yeah. Syria or something like that. Um, but uh, it's not only that, but it's also the insanity of the whole thing. I mean, I remember this woman, what her, what's her name? Sydney. Uh, Sydney Powell. Yeah. Who, yeah, she was who, like the, one of the lawyers for Trump or something like that. Yeah, and, and she, was, yeah. Had, she was just like going out on some idea that it was Hugo Chavez who had uh, constructed the whole thing. <laughs> the man died seven years ago. Like it's like, <laughs> and and so so yeah. on the highest highest level, you have this this completely detached reality. Now that detached reality, that I think is actually part of the point here, because um, because now I just spoke about the subjectivity and how how we we lose our capacity to read subjectivity in in the world be, around us, uh, and um, but then we have this detachment uh, between our interior and our exterior. Th- these detachments, these ruptures are going on in so many ways uh, in our reality. The, the mirror cabinets that we are living in in the, uh, in the social media world, they are generated by uh, attention extraction capitalism, but they enclose us in these these little realities where we are, our own ideas are being mirror, mirrored back to us. And this is uh, some, like on, on the right wing, of course, it goes completely bananas and people go like clinically insane, uh, or that's what it sounds like. But on the left wing, we also have mirror cabinets and, and we have very, very steep reaction patterns that are, uh, and we also, I sometimes even feel that I see on the left wing that there are, similar patterns, um, hazy distant threads that people are uh, personalizing in, in, in ways that are actually not so dissimilar from what you sometimes see on the right. The, these are like a Tyson Junkerporter, the amazing um, Australian, Aboriginal Australian uh, author that I, that I uh, mentioned to you. He talks about how solutions to complex problems have to grow from complex community networks of relations between people. And and these, it is as if the internet, which is so relational, has has kind of descended into this mirror cabinet where uh, that just produce polarized and aggressive and hateful positions that are really difficult to to, um, uh, create these relations. Now, the last time we spoke, uh, we spoke about the Ragnarok. Uh, mm-hmm. Since that time, I've also thought more about that and worked, I wouldn't say worked about it, on it, but I've thought more about it. And when you read the Ragnarok myth in the light of, uh, I think, uh, a traditional knowledge perspective, I think that ruptured relation is actually what sparks the Ragnarok. The Ragnarok mm-hmm. is caused by that there are forces of chaos and there are forces of the ordered social sphere and it's not so much just that the forces of chaos suddenly attack the ordered social sphere they do but the reason they do it is because that in in the north european mythology there used to be multiple multifarious multi-sided relations between the forces of chaos and the gods and uh, the gods who uphold the harmonious sphere when these ties break down, uh, then they start behaving a little bit like Christian angels and demons, in fact, and they clash, they enter, they descend into some sort of cosmic state of war. Uh, and this is why, and I, I see this in so many ways, 
in our society today, these ruptures, there's also rupture between knowledge and populations. People are, uh, like two million academic articles are produced every year that uh, of which nine out of 10 are never read by anybody but the peer review board. There's a huge rupture, a huge detachment, a huge lack of relation, unrelatedness between production of knowledge and actual humanity. Two million academic no uh, articles of knowledge productions just flowing out into nothingness. Um, and um, yeah, so anyway, now I, I, ve I ve do you say veered off a little bit? <laughs> veered off, <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Particularly right. with conspiracy theories, this detachment, uh, detachment situation that we're in now is a kind of, of uh, it definitely promotes its fertile breeding ground for conspiracy theories. So that's a combination. The, uh, okay. We have lost traditional culture's capacity to read intention and subjectivity of the world that meets us. And we have enclosed ourselves in mirror cabinets and thereby ruptured us from uh, being in touch also with those that are uh, rather different from ourselves. Thank you.